Jesse, Jeremy, Jacob, oh, the three J's. Congratulations for Andy somebody. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having us. This is a very funny uh, comedic, uh, um, you know, story, you know, all the way from Chicago to L.A. So we have to ask that obligatory question of where did the original story came from? So I'm guessing it's from the minds of both Jeremy and Jacob in this case. Well, uh, Jeremy and I and I wrote it. Oh, OK. Um, but Jake was I mean, he said he did a lot of improv. So, he, you know, maybe he needs a writing credit, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, uh, you know, we just started writing this thing, to be honest. It didn't, I don't even know where I, I tried to rack my brain. Where did it come from? It was just like, Hey, what if we just start with a guy who hates his job? You know, do you remember Jeremy? Where? Yeah, we, we said, uh, guy who hates his job. And we thought about not to give too much away, but uh, a woman who's writing a book and we see some characters play out. And so we kind of started there and I, I just, I took the first 10 and we passed that back and forth and we just kept passing back and forth the script until we thought we had something. And then we showed it to Leslie, we showed it to everybody. I remember sending it to Jake Bruce and what do you think? Give us some notes, give us some feedback. This clearly is not the finished product, but you know, we want to build these characters out. So it feels like a big Lebowski, like there's other, you know, many many other characters with a lot of things going on and that was and to make it a fun have a fun comedy because it's, it's not a studio film so you can have as much fun as you want and that's what we did terrific well it, it is a small and intimate uh, film so i guess uh, jacob since technically you're not the one with the writing credit uh, what drew you into this project <laughs> uh, um I, i've known jeremy for a a, a long time now we i mean it's got to be it's got to be more than 15 years. It might yeah. be even 20. I, I'm not going to do the math because I don't want to know. Uh, I've known him for a while. And uh, and he called me up and he said, I, I want you to take a look at this script and uh, and just let me know what you think. And it was it's it was really hilarious. And it had it, it's got a couple of really good twists in it. And it's got a lot of different it's, you know, as an actor, it's got a lot of characters that I wanted to play. And he said, uh I want you to look at this one character because uh, I think you might be right for it. And I said, great, this is great. I, I love this character. And he said, there's only one catch. And I said, what's that? And he said, you're going to have to come in and actually audition for us to get this part. And I said, okay, great. I, I would love to do that. I would love, And so, um, yeah, reading the script initially, I, I was laughing out loud at a lot of the stuff was in there. And, uh, and like I said, to sort of go off of what they were saying earlier, like these are big characters, all of them. I mean, there, there was even, you know, there, at one point we had a, a delivery driver and the guy had a whole backstory. Like the, the, the delivery driver had a point of view and, and he had an opinion about stuff. Like there's no, even the small characters in this are big characters. And, and as an actor that, that draws you to a script immediately. So, you know, what I, what Jake, I love, sorry, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, it was just one thing about Jake is we we've done improv together, so I knew that if Jesse and I could just get get somewhere near it, near a character for him, that he would take it from there, and uh, that's that's what uh, really good improvisers do. And um, so that was just little thing I wanted to throw in there. Jake told me he goes, you know, when when Jeremy sent me the script, I didn't want to read it. Yeah, I was either one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to hate it and I'm going to have to tell him because that's what real friends do. Yep. Or I'm going to have to do the damn thing. <laughs> and, he, and he loved it. So <laughs> absolutely true. I was, Before that's right. I was life. afraid to read it. Cause if it, if it was a piece of garbage, like then I got to call Jeremy and be like, look, man, uh, oh, it's a piece of garbage or yeah. The flip side is like, shit, I really want to do this movie. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I yeah i remember you, you telling me that you were very uh apprehensive when i sent it to you you're like you know give me a little time and i was like you know i know what you're doing i know i know what you're doing and uh <laughs> but uh yeah no, no it just it helps when and also for me and jesse you know i, I remember telling jesse like we talked about jake bruce we we're like it helps us to to write in a character's voice that we know because i know jesse came and saw a couple of our improv shows so he had some familiarity so it just you know, doing that and then 
and getting John Buckley looking into him, thank God, uh, playing a huge role and even a smaller role, but a, a girl who really shined, Carmen Morales. I mean, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bucko and, 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 and Timmy is also. Really yeah, awesome. Tim Parrish. Everybody. I mean, you know, Tim Parrish was so. Jesse, could remember that when Tim Parrish walked into the audition room? He was just the weirdest guy we'd ever met. And we're like, immediately, he's in. He walked <laughs> in. He, you know, when you, when they audition, they always give you the headshot. And he gave us a headshot. And it was just a hand-drawn smiley face. And he said, I am Bishop underneath. And I was like, what, what is this? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I ran out of headshots. So I think. This is what I have for you. And I was like, okay, well, he's already pretty nutty and, and hilarious. So, and then he that just- That is some serious crazy. stones. I don't think I would have, I don't think even I would have attempted that. Like knowing one <laughs> or two people in the room, I still showed up like suit, briefcase. <laughs> oh yeah. Brand new pictures. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Parrish came in with serial killer energy for sure. And that oh, was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, th this is a film with a bunch of uh, big personality characters, and it sounds like the whole cast, everyone has a big personality. Yeah. Yeah, we're lucky to get rallying it all in. Yeah. I agree. And also what, what really, uh, I think part of working with Jeremy and, and, and Jesse is that they – Okay, these guys work fast. I mean, I, it's. I remember the first day of shooting, and we're shooting something, and the second unit is setting up something else in the other room, and then the DP is already in lighting the third scene. Like, you know, I remember being like, you know, there's a lot of downtime on a movie set, and it's like, no, you're going from shot to shot to shot to shot. But because of that, we were able to do multiple takes and and you know uh, and 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 directing on the fly and getting notes on the fly while we're in the setups and so while you've got all these big characters like as we're running them multiple times they're becoming realer and realer these these you know they're no one is a cartoon in this movie um, despite, you know, the, the, the bigness of the personalities and the bigness of the, of the actors that they have, it was amazing to watch it. Like, these are real people. Like you feel bad for them when shit goes wrong and you feel good for them when, when shit goes right. And I, I think that's a credit to, you know, obviously the writing, but also the environment that these guys provided for us on set of being able to just, just dig and dig and dig and dig. Wow. When you're going so fast, you don't really have much time to think about what's my motivation? Where am I? It's like, dude, let's right, let's do it. Let's do, like we're set up. Let's shoot it. How many takes? Get Fifty setups today. Fifteen takes, and then let's get out of here. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, th this is your. I want to say this is your biggest role. You you carried the movie um, through throughout since uh, you know the beginning to end. Um, could you talk about uh, you know portraying uh, you know Andy? In, in this case. Yeah, we, Jesse and I talked about like, you know, this guy's kind of Seinfeld and everybody else is like, you know, they're the, I'm, I'm kind of the center of it, but all these great characters get to be uh, floating around me in a way that, you know, you just, you just provide that through line. And then you have Jake, you have Carmen Rallis and you have Tim Parrish and um, everybody gets to play these very fun, uh, very wild characters. And, and John Buckley gets to, to be, one of the worst human beings ever uh, on screen. He tells one of the most beautiful women I've ever personally seen um, that you you look like shit and you're probably never going to get married. You're basically embarrassing and I'm a great plastic surgeon. Thank you very much. Enjoy your enjoy your day. Um, and he you know he even hated the pizza the guy that delivered the pizza to his room. It, it, I won't spoil it, but so I just thought you know. Even Jesse and I went back and forth, like, like man, am I boring? This, like, what is? But it's like, no, you're you're the Seinfeld. You're you're just you're the audience. Yeah, you're providing the through line for everybody. So, you know, it's good to just play that and um, hopefully make it. You know, just like Jake and I have done improv forever, make everybody else shine around you. And that's if you're the if you're the lead, you're providing the through line for it. That if you can make everybody else shine, you did your job. Yeah, Jesse, you know, in, a, in an indie comedy with something like this, especially with a bunch of improv uh, actors or players on your cast, how do you handle the direction um, for them? Or do you just let, let them say, go at it? Stay, stay out of the way. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a there was a there are a few scenes where we were, you know, mainly it's just blocking and kind of redirecting and maybe throwing out a suggestion or here, but mainly it's just staying out of the way and uh providing a safe space for everybody to feel comfortable and able to to improv like they they can. It's scary to a lot of actors, but some people love it and, and when they're good at it, they really shine, you know. Wow, most excellent. Jacob, when when you uh boarded this project, was a was having a mustache a requirement? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a horrible, horrible idea, sir. That was really... It was your idea, wasn't it? Uh, I had the mustache for something else. Um, and it was, uh, it was a, a, a theater thing. And, uh, and, and I couldn't get rid of it uh, for the audition. I was in a, a play. And, and so when uh, I showed up for the audition, like, I don't have a headshot with that mustache. Like, that, that mustache would need its own headshot. <laughs> and and when they called you know they they came back and they, they were both like jesse and jeremy were like yeah the the mustache uh is definitely a thing we, we gotta have it um and then of course due to the pandemic and all that sort of stuff it took us i think it was about 17 years to film this movie <laughs> Which is how long I had to have yeah. that mustache because I never knew when they were gonna call and be like, "Hey, man, we got pickups. We got to get you back on set." So there was a day where there was a, we said, "Okay, Jake, you're wrapped. That's it." And then of course we we well we need you for one more scene, and he came in and we had a mustache merkin for you. Yeah, or our hair and makeup woman wove in a mustache that looks. <laughs> Spot on. He did a stunt mustache, yeah. Because again, I, I, I was. This is already working on something else, so I was almost clean shaven, and yeah. So what are we gonna do? And boy, makeup did a dynamite job with that yeah. thing. <laughs> the merkin that is awful. The face merkin. The face merkin. <laughs> Jesse, Jeremy, could you tell us about the challenges of a of a comedy indie like like this I'm, I'm pretty sure like locations was probably one of the things because because i i felt like this was uh like an la story and i'm not even sure whose house you filmed most of this stuff at <laughs> it's funny the uh the locations weren't that hard because you have all these apps you have uh not uh peer space and gigster so you can just go on and look and say well that house will work and it's you know 80 bucks an hour we can get it for the full day. They provide insurance. We had our own insurance, but the locations weren't uh, really that hard to do, which amazingly in LA, everyone's like, you can't shoot in LA because it's too expensive. Not true. That's Except a myth. for the bean. The bean was the only issue. <laughs> yeah. And then Chicago, we just flew out there for a weekend. Uh, Jeremy's from Decatur. So he kind of, you know, knew where we were going to shoot and everything. And we just spent a day shooting with a crew that we got from the local film school. Mm -hmm. So I think if you, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And if you're not going to get intimidated by LA uh, locations or, or anywhere, it's not really a, that big of an issue. We had a tiny crew, though, so we weren't rolling in with trucks or anything. Mm -hmm. And I think there's 20 plus locations in the, in the film. Well, I, I was just trying to wrap my head around that Jeremy uh, managed to walk from Union Station to all the way to, uh, to the coast. <laughs> Yeah, that was one can that was our camera guy, his camera, and Jeremy and I just out having fun for a day. He did actually make the walk and he beat the grip truck there because the traffic <laughs> on the 101 was a nightmare that day. So actually Jeremy got there first. They do refer to me as the white Carl Lewis. Yeah. Dating myself a little bit, but uh the white Carl Lewis. They they do. And it's it's funny, people from LA are like, wait, that's not the right path to get to the beach. But everyone else is like, well, I, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> most excellent i i mean what, there, there there was something in the film that uh that that i was like trying trying to uh, trying to think about was uh when um jacob was basically he he pulls out a flip phone and i was like is that is that military uh quality flip phone what what every everyone in the film uses smartphones and all of a sudden he just pu pulls out a flip phone <laughs> that's his real phone <laughs> You use your real phone in the, in the film? <laughs> I, I do have a military-grade flip phone. I really do. 
I do. Uh, See, so this I, is all. This is how I, the casting works perfectly. He's cast right. the right guy. Yeah, actually, that was more important to them than the mustache was that I had the flip phone. It did feed into the fact that Jake Bruce's uh, character was a guy that fully lived in the past, and we we loved that that little theme for him was he you know he can't get over <laughs> a woman that left him. He lives in the past. He's constantly talking about the past, and we've all met those people who just did everything's past, 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 past. So. And he's, he's, I mean, Gene is kind of a tinfoil hat guy as well. And, you know, in, for me, the justification <laughs> was like, y you know, your smartphone's getting hacked right now. Like they're taking all your information from you and, and there's nobody cracking into this brick. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. That is great. So is there any possibility for a sequel to Andy somebody? <laughs> Yeah, we've that's the second time we've heard that. Um, well, we did leave it open, so yeah, we could probably whip one of those out pretty quickly. <laughs> People want to see that, and they want to see the cops spin off. The oh cops yeah, no, two oh, detectives, yeah. two detectives for sure. But they, but they didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the whole in one location shoot, just yeah. another stakeout. <laughs> yeah, but we we the easiest shoot because a, a lot a lot of the shots were just just everyone in cars. <laughs> a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. They were very effective detectives. They never moved an inch. You know, speaking of the hate your job theme, that kind of blends right in. Yeah. Poor guys just stuck in the car. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. A lot of people Imagine what that car must smell like. <laughs> and there's just, there's something inherently funny about two detectives, guys that have risen to a level who are so they're so against their job that the moment that they can actually do something they're fast asleep because they've, they've just been drinking and doing drugs all day that's just funny to me well most, most definitely well we we'll, we'll, we'll see which uh which film comes first right the two detectives or the uh sequel <laughs> to Andy somebody yeah <laughs> Um, let, let me wrap things up uh, with you guys. Uh, so what's up next with you guys um, af after this film? Um, Jesse, why don't you start? I have a, we're shooting a horror film, like a supernatural thriller, kind of uh, old school haunted house film. So we've got the script locked on that. And now we're just looking, uh, you know, location scouting and uh, trying to put that together. And then we have a college teen angst comedy kind of in the works about a college radio station. But that's still kind of like way back. So that's what I've got going on. Jacob? I'm just really uh, riding Jeremy's coattails. Um, <laughs> my my entire career is is based in, entirely on his success. So whatever Jeremy's next job is, uh, I'll probably be a, a, a PA on it, I'm imagining. <laughs> you know, a funny story about Jacob. One of the first times we met, uh, one of the things you say in improv, you know, just to mess around with somebody, I, I, we were getting ready to go on stage and I looked at him and I was like, hey, why don't you stay out of my way tonight? And he didn't know that I was kidding. And so I don't think, uh, I'm pretty sure he hated me for a couple of years because of that. And I, we never cleared it up, but uh, <laughs> we were able to come back together. But um, for me, I've, I've got a pilot in at Fox. So I'm we're hoping get some good news on that in the next uh, couple months. We'll see where that goes. I, it's the one that got shut down at CBS. So um, we'll see what happens there. And I'm doing another film in Illinois about, uh, it's called The Legacy, about a high school football hero that throws the big interception needlessly in the high school football championship game. And he never gets over it. And we pick up the story where my character is 40 years old and he, he can't touch a football, but he works in an office, um, he's trying to take over his dad's bobblehead sports doll company, and he's just he's just kind of like a, a mess. It's like a Step Brothers kind of film, if anybody likes that. But uh, yeah, so those two things are next for me. I'm playing one of the bobbleheads in that movie. Yeah, Jake Bruce is a bobblehead. <laughs> and uh, I think Jesse gets his head kicked off. That's been a dream of his his whole life, so. <laughs> That'll be a hard pass for me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys are wonderful. Hey, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about Andy Somebody. Hope you guys all work together again. You guys are you guys are terrific. Oh, yeah, thanks for having man. us. Yeah, thanks Great. for having us. Thanks very much. Appreciate that compliment. Thank you. Thank you.